Hello, happy Wednesday, my peaceful and profitable entrepreneurs. I am so happy to be here today. We are talking about why passive revenue is actually slowing you down from 10K months. This is something most multi six figure coaches aren't talking about. Most people in the online space aren't talking about. So I really want to share this with you today. And I'm really excited and passionate about this. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Let me pull up um, Facebook and make sure I can see y'all's comments. Um, as always, I am just so grateful that y'all are here. So if you leave a comment or ask a question, um, I'm just so happy to answer that because I want this to be for you and anyone who joins live um, or comments or you know says hello, anything will get you entered to win for a free uh, masterclass. <laughs> it's the playbook and the live stream about mastering sales posts because I see so often so many people are not actually selling. They think that they're selling because they have like a PS or a call to action at the end of the post and um, that's just not selling. So this is a playbook I wanna give someone who joins today for um, just as a thank you and just really walking you through mastering sales posts and creating sales posts that really connect and convert. And so we will dive in in just a second. Um, we had a great weekend. It was my daughter's <laughs> birthday party. We've talked about this a couple weeks now, but um, we went shopping with my mom and got her some clothes and went and got a smoothie and um, we got our facial together, our little mommy daughter facial. So I'm kind of peeling a little bit, but um, I'm supposed to do that. So we're good. Um, and then she had a slumber party with a couple of her friends, which I'm good. I don't need to do that again for a very long time because um, there was not a lot of sleep happening. So um, that's what's going on in my world. But I do want to take a moment just to really, uh, I just hopefully I won't start bawling and crying talking about this, but just, you know, about Israel and all the terrorist attacks and everything going on. It just is really heartbreaking and hard. And um, yeah, just to say we're with you. Um, send our thoughts out because that's a lot. So anyone affected by it, um, just really want to let you know that we're thinking about you and um, you know our thoughts and prayers are with you. So let me recompose myself because <laughs> you know always a good live stream when you're crying, um, but it's just really important to um, acknowledge what is going on and it's just really hard. Um, but okay, take a breath. And hopefully I won't have to get out my snot rag and blow out like five pounds of snot because I'm one of those people that gets really snotty when I cry. But um, if you're joining, please say hello. We are going to talk about um, why passive revenue is slowing you down from 10K months. And this is something that um, I've always kind of been passionate about, but it's come up a lot recently. I am one of those people that loves to use YouTube to work out. And so I do YouTube workout videos and I also do meditations. And so those meditations are like Joe Dispenza and... Um, Wayne Dwyer and all the things I feel like I watch on YouTube like come with these ads that are like make money in your sleep or manifest this with passive revenue and you know I just always ignore that stuff like I just am like skip skip ignore um, but I've talked to so many business owners recently like clients non-clients you know free calls like all these people that are really looking for passive revenue most of my clients most of the business owners I talk to are parents um, you know 98% of my clients are women, so we have limited capacity. We have limited time, and they're very aware of the fact that, like, they only, you know, can create and do so much. And so passive revenue just seems like this amazing fix or this amazing answer to, like, I only have a certain amount of time, so let me create this passive revenue stream so I can make money while I sleep or, you know, just have it, like, on autopilot. Hi, Anna. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Um, so I understand like the appeal of passive revenue. And so, um, so often I see that it just is really slowing people down. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, and my, my beef with that and why I think it slows people down so much. So I have a couple examples outside of business. Cause I think it's like really helpful to see like things outside of business before we try to look at it in business. Um, so I am in Mount Pleasant. We're in Charleston, South Carolina. So if you know this area, this is a very happening hot area. And we have multiple houses around us that are rental properties. And the same person owns all these rental properties. And the only reason I know all this is because um, we talk to the people who live there. So um, I don't know the person that owns them, but basically, you know, rental properties are one of those things that are like passive revenue. And, you know, everybody's trying to like 
buy rental properties and you know Airbnb them or rent them out and like yes and the lady that owns all these properties has her handyman living in one of them so he used to live farther away and she actually brought him into one of the houses one of these like houses that she could rent for like a very high ticket and she's letting him live there for a discount because there's so much work to be done on all these houses like she's willing to give away some of that revenue because it's not just passive revenue like she needs a handyman people are always calling about things and so having him here and living right here within all these houses is like a trade-off that she's willing to make because yes it's passive revenue but like there's just stuff she has to deal with all the time and she'd rather like take a hit with this one property and have him help with all of that rental homes passive or residual yes thank you Anna. so it's like this is you could just teach this whole thing right now because Annis is the queen of this um yeah it's not so much passive but a lot of people get into that mindset of it is and so um, that's just a really great example outside of like owning a business that it's like it's not exactly just like passive like she still has to deal with all these things she still is this handyman that lives right here in the area to help deal with that um, so that's one example outside of business the other one is my friend um, we visited her in Colombia the other weekend she has two new puppies and she was telling me and I was asking her about like how did she get the puppies where did they go all this stuff and she said the lady who was the breeder actually is a real estate agent and her husband has this other job he's like a CEO they both have you know great income but they just thought it would be fun to do like passive revenue on the side so they bought these dogs so they could breed them they did one set of puppies and she was like we're done like we're never doing this again like I'm good like this is not passive like please do not promote me to your friends because I'm not doing this again and so that's one of those things where like she thought it was going to be like oh we just buy these dogs and they have babies and we sell them and what you know passive revenue but like it was just so like outside of her wheelhouse and not something she was prepared for and so it really was like a drain on her time and just not worth the effort and the time and the money that she put into it so those are just things I want to talk about right off the bat that like is part of my beef with like passive revenue and people saying passive revenue because um, it, it even outside of business and these things that people typically think of as passive they're just not and that's just kind of like the mindset piece of this conversation so if you've been here you know I like to walk through mindset strategy organize and implement so that's like kind of the mindset piece I want to just like level set with um, I had a business owner I was talking to recently and she is very limited capacity she's a mom she has kids like she wants to set up or she has already set up passive a passive revenue container because she can only do so much hands-on in this one service and she didn't have the results she wanted from her initial service and she added on this passive revenue stream that she also didn't have the revenue she wanted from that so it's like she didn't have what she wanted with either revenue streams so we were talking about like like if I were working with you long term I would recommend putting the passive revenue stream on hold which a lot of people probably won't tell you to do but like I would go all in on your other revenue stream she wants about like 8 to 10k a month in there so I would go all in on that first and have that set up as like a well-oiled machine before you add on this other passive revenue container because diluted focus equals diluted results like you're not doing either of them well and even those added together barely equal what you want every month and then you're just like double working and double like two different audiences that you're talking about two different offers like you're just making the amount of work you do so much more so I think it's just kind of like BS for all these people to be like oh you can do these passive revenue and blah 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 so we're gonna talk about today what I actually see passive revenue to be and to equal um, so it's just it it's the mindset piece first it's like it's not all this glitzy marketing like that is what sells and that's why it sells because it is so tempting like we all want to make more money for the least amount of work possible like that's just what we do um, we are humans like I was and you might appreciate this um, we were reading Berenstein Bears the other night and the bears were all wrapped up in like this treasure map and finding you know treasure hidden treasure and mama bear is like oh it's probably too good to be true you know so she hides like all these pictures of their family and she's like this is the real treasure but all that to say like it, it's in the Berenstein Bears books is a lesson so like this is something that we all need to learn um, as children as adults like it we want like the easy ticket the fast thing what's the easiest way to make money and like 
If your just goal is to create passive revenue and make that right off the bat, then it's just so much harder than like, hey, I'm gonna create this well-oiled machine and then it kind of turns into passive revenue. So that's what we're gonna kind of talk about. And I'll give an example of myself and my bookkeeping services. Um, I've been in business almost eight years now and the bookkeeping piece of my business is kind of passive. Like I have stopped promoting it. I don't offer it to anyone like unless they're a one-to-one -one client, like it, I'm just not putting it out there. Um, and so like, I just wanna like bring that to you as a frame of like, I got really clear on bookkeeping for so many years and went all in on that. And like now, I mean, we still get people just like reaching out like at least once a week for bookkeeping services. And I'm just like, no, like thanks, but no thanks. Like years ago I would've been like, whoa, like jumping up and down. And now I'm just like, that's not a thing, but it's because I went all in on this one thing for so long that like I've just built enough momentum with that and set up, you know, things in place that like now it's not just me doing the bookkeeping. I don't have to promote it anymore. Like we have things set up on autopilot for like billing and engagement letters and all this stuff that it's such a well-oiled machine that it's kind of passive because I'm not in it doing it all every single day and it still takes my time. Like we had a couple clients this month that like change their billing so I had to go in and we're like changing all of that or sometimes we have to update engagements or you know at the end of the year I do all the engagement letters for 1099s and like it's just like it comes and goes with what it needs but it's not always passive but it is like become pretty passive so it's kind of that thing where like I didn't intentionally go into this thinking like this is going to be a passive revenue stream it just kind of was the thing I went all in on and it kind of has just turned out that way. So that's what I call to you, um, looking at my notes. Like you can like have an offer and make it such like a well-oiled machine that like, I know if I do X, Y, Z, then I'm gonna get clients. And I know that I have these systems and processes in place. And I know that I have team to support me. Like that's when it gets to be like pretty passive without just being like, I wanna make money in my sleep. So. Um, the strategy piece of this is pick something that you actually want to do. Like, that's like the first thing. Like, let's just start there. Like, pick something that you love, that you're amazing at, not because someone was like, this is passive revenue. This is going to make you money. This is like the quick fix, the easy ticket out, you know, all that. Um, I think it's really about like picking something that you love, like bookkeeping, like, oh my gosh, my brain just like loves that stuff. Like, I love things to go in its place. I love debit SQL credits. Like, I like, I like nice clean chart of accounts and profit and loss, like all that stuff makes me happy. And I've just kind of moved into like a new phase of work. So it's like that got to come along with me. So think about in your business, like what do you just love to do? Like what just naturally comes to you that you're great at, that people like are like, holy cow, how does your brain think like that? Like, Anna, we've talked about this, like your brain thinks very differently than my brain. Like you see a room and have totally different thoughts. And my brain is like, does the light turn on? Cool, all right, here we go. So like, that's just kind of like, we all have these different things. And if someone was like, hey, Jordan, here's a way to do passive revenue or you know, anybody else, like we couldn't necessarily take ourselves and our skills and put them in that box for passive revenue. Like we have to find that on our own and create that from what we love. So no matter what business you have, think about like creating a business around what you love and what you love doing and then creating systems and processes around it. So it's like, I know when I go do these things, I get these results. Um, so that's the first piece of the strategy part. And like talking about loving what you do and loving your work, also just love the business of building a business. Like it's so easy for people to be like, oh, I just wanna do this stuff in my business. I don't wanna do any of this other stuff. I don't wanna sell. I don't wanna do the bookkeeping. I don't wanna do this, but it's like, they really are like limiting themselves because that just comes with the territory. Like that's just part of owning a business. Like we don't have to be good at every single thing. We don't have to love every single piece. Like I'm not expecting people to be like, wow, I love bookkeeping or I love figuring out invoices. Like it doesn't have to be that, but it is just this love of like building a business and seeing this thing that you're creating because we are creators. Like building something out of nothing is creative. Like that was a huge realization for myself is like, I'm very, you know, left-brained analytical numbers, but like being like, actually I am creative because I've built a business over the past eight years out of nothing. And so when I bring that to my clients who think that they aren't creative or think that they, 
you know, don't have these skills that it's like you're literally building something out of nothing and how can you just enjoy that whole journey of it like how can you you know just like love this like science project that you're working on like get curious like okay this didn't work now we're trying this or you know we brought this team member in and how can we try to get different results out of them like it's kind of always this thing that we're like cool okay like let's see what's happening like we put this ingredient in and it didn't work like we thought or like Maybe we need to turn up the heat a little bit, you know, just like really looking at it from that like curious observer. Like it's not from this like, hey, I'm trying to create passive revenue. It's literally like I'm building something that I love and I'm doing it in a way that feels good. And we're just seeing what's working um, and we're giving ourselves a ton of grace around it um, because, you know, I, I put a note in here. It's probably easier to just get a job. And I use that in quotes because I'm always like, could you, is it really easier? You know, like I think there are so many trade-offs of being a business owner that I'm just so willing to take. So this is one of those things where it's like, if you genuinely just don't love the business of building a business, then like, you know, it, not everyone, it's not like you're like made to be an entrepreneur or not. Like I believe anyone could be an entrepreneur, but it's like the people who are more successful and get farther are because they just love the business of owning a business. So, you know, if it's just like, hey, I'd rather just go get my paycheck and like do that whole thing, like that's totally fine. You know, like there are both just trade-offs to both of them and just seeing like if I'm a business owner, that's just kind of the trade-off. It's just seeing that like I have to kind of figure things out. I have to put on my CEO hat. I have to be willing to like try things, fail, get uncomfortable, like, you know, all that stuff I don't have to do necessarily if I was a W-2 employee, um, but there are also, you know, trade-offs of that. So it's like, the grass isn't green on either side, but just figuring out like, what is my threshold? What is my availability for trade-offs? And then just seeing it as a trade-off. Like I know that my revenue fluctuates kind of every month. Like we're basically, we have like really good reoccurring revenue every month, but there's still like tweaks within that. Where it's like, if I was like, I need to know down to the dollar what I'm gonna make every month. And like, yes, that would be better for me to go you know, get a W-2 job and like just go that route. But like I am totally all in on the trade-off of just being like, hey, I have to figure things out and some months might take a dip and sometimes we have to let a client go or, you know, whatever shifts that happen and just really being okay with that. So um, that's the piece I have to say about the strategy. So the organization piece kind of goes like piggybacks off of the strategy piece. So the thing is to like pick and stick. So like I was talking about with that business owner, um, like going in on one thing, like one stream of revenue and get really great at that. Because then that's when the clients come on a regular basis. So she was at a point where she had a little bit of recurring revenue every month, but her prices weren't as high as she wanted. She wanted to raise them. She wanted to keep having people come in at that rate. And like, for me, that's where you need to focus is really like, okay, this is my mainstream of revenue and I'm gonna get really good at this. So I'm gonna get my prices where I want them. I'm gonna know that if I have this many number of calls or free audits or whatever, then like I know that they will convert probably X percent. And so I know that every month I'll kind of get like this new batch of however many clients. Um, so it's kind of looking at it in that way of being like, let me get really honed in on this and then add another stream of revenue or then add another strategy because it's just so much easier to do one thing first. Let me know if y'all have any questions about this. Um, but this is kind of like the piece that you hear about building like a boring business. And this is what I want like all of my clients to do, like secretly, publicly, like build a boring business because that is what creates the biggest results is like a business that just works on repeat. And you get to be creative within the pieces of your business and within the strategies. But like building a boring business is like, okay, we know that when we do these things or that these things just always happen and we know that they create clients in this way, then like that's when business just feels so good because it's not based on the next sale or the next client. It's based on knowing that I can do this again and again. And that's when business just clicks and it feels like easeful when you're like, I know what my messaging is. I know like, I can go out and sell on these different platforms or I can send a couple emails a month and do some personal outreach and I know that people just come in the door and then I convert this percentage of them and it just gets to feel like really easeful and like you're not like wondering every month like how much are we gonna sell how many people are we gonna have like it's not this like feast or famine it's not based on that next client it's just based on knowing you can do it again and again 
Um, and I know we've had this conversation before with a few people, but it's like the chitty chitty bang bang. Like uh, we just watched it the other week. So it's just so top of mind is that, you know, the inventor dad like has this whole thing set up for breakfast. So it cooks breakfast and a ball rolls down a thing and it hits a lever and it turns on the oven and this thing cracks an egg. And it's literally like that. Like we take these certain actions and it equals this result. And so it's like an equation that I'm trying to work with all of my clients to figure out is like, what's the equation in their business? Because it's gonna be different for everyone. Like even my clients who are in similar industries, maybe with similar offers, they're still just different. They have different um, personalities. They like different things. Like one of my clients is like so overwhelmed with Facebook groups and is just like, I feel like it's like sucking my soul. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like we don't have to go all in there if it's just literally draining life away from you. Like I totally get it. Um, if she was like, no, I'm just too uncomfortable to do that. That would be a totally different conversation. And I would really lovingly nudge her to go there. But if it's just like, this is just like sucking my soul out of me, then like, cool. Like let's figure out what else works and feels good because it's not just like one thing. It's like all of these things work. So we just need to figure out what works for you, what works for your audience, for your messaging, um, how to get clients through the door, get them in. Um, so it's just really like building this boring business, this equation, this recipe that's like, I just know that doing these things works for my business and it doesn't have to work for anyone else's business. They can't take my exact strategy and slap it on their business and like have the same result. And that's why I'm so like into one-to-one. -one. And I think that it's so important because like when people are buying strategies online, it's like that worked for someone else, probably in the past with a different audience, with having, you know, different number of years experience, like just saying that like, hey, buy this strategy in the box or this marketing template, like that just doesn't work, especially with like chat GPT and AI, like the world is just changing so much. So if you're buying something that someone used that worked for them like months or years ago, it's just wildly inappropriate. Like as a coach, I would never be like, hey, you need to do my strategy because it's working for me. Like that would just be, I'd feel like the worst coach ever. Like I'm working with them to figure out what works for their business with their audience and really inviting them to learn about their audience because my clients are an expert on their audience. But that's what we're wanting them to do, wanting them to figure this out because like there's just nothing like it. Like you can't replace knowing your audience and knowing how to book clients or how to make sales. So this also might look like getting support with a team because we can't be in all the places all the time. Like it's really hard to run our business and do all the emails and do all the social posts and do all the engagement and, 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 and. Like sometimes we do need to hire a team for this and that is when profit margins go down. Um, and that's not like a fun thing to talk about, but business is a long-term game. And so seeing that like, yes, my profits might go down, but then I get to a point where like my expenses pretty much stay the same and my revenue just keeps going up because I have this like machine that's built. I have this recipe, you know, whatever you wanna, whatever analogy you wanna use, it's like, I know that these things work and they cost this amount. And then anything on top of that is just extra profit and extra revenue. Um, we're building a revenue machine. We're figuring out the revenue recipe. Um, so it's not fun to talk about and it is hard. Like I've been there, I've watched my profit margins go way down. Like for five years of my business, it was just me. And then like, I just went and hired a whole team. And so like my profit margins tanked. But then it really helped like, okay, like just hang in there and let the momentum build and let the results come because then you see them equal out and then the revenue can go higher than it ever could without the team. So that's part of the organized piece that I really wanna mention because um, there are things with a recipe or building your strategy or whatever works to like bring in clients. Like you just might need to have team support or a coach or someone because like it's so hard to do everything yourself and so we just need to like normalize that like yeah it costs money to do that and like yeah profits might go down and the goal is to like have this long-term support so that like you keep getting to work it over and over and over and it just gets to like grow so let me know if y'all have questions we're quiet today and if you have any questions i'll put you on the spot so that's the mindset the strategy and the organized piece and then the last piece is implement. So implement kind of circles back to mindset. So like 
this is goes back to like ignoring all the shiny promises, all the like make revenue while you sleep. <laughs> Anna says all the questions, <laughs> throw them at me. <laughs> I'm here. Um, you know, implementing can be so hard when we keep questioning ourselves and we keep questioning our strategy and what we've organized and what we've put in place. Like the hardest thing to do is to do something and not see results. Like hands down, it sucks, it's hard. Um, but what I've seen to be true after doing this for, you know, with clients behind the scenes for so many years is that like, we literally have to give something time to build momentum and take, you know, like catch on. We want to tweak and test along the way, but like we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable sitting in a strategy. So Anna said this time allowed to try to, the time allowed to try to each process when you do know it's time to try a different one. Right. So yeah, there's like, there's no set rule, you know, it's like, okay, we go all in on a strategy for 60, 90 days and see what traction we get. And even then like, okay, cool. This worked for a while and now we're seeing this. Like, and we've talked about this, like just things in the market have changed, things in the economy, like things with some of my clients, big customers or big vendors or competition, like something that worked for a while, all of a sudden it's like, skirt, like what's happening? And it's like, the better that we can like pivot and navigate, like as small business owners, we just have that asset in our back pocket. Like, you know, Blockbuster or some of these big businesses that just were so big, it was hard to turn the ship and just being a small business owner or with a small team and being able to look at the data, like after a month being like, okay, what we were doing, is it really working? So like, let's try something else. And so it's like, it's a balance of like, yeah, when do we just try a totally new strategy? And when do we just keep working the one that we have and tweak it? And so that's where it's like, I, I don't want to even say like change a new strategy because, um, you know, a lot of the strategies that all my clients use, they all work. It's just a matter of getting them to work for their business. Like selling on social work, selling in Facebook groups work, but not even selling, but just showing up and being visible in front of your audience, in front of other audience. Um, that all just works and like, you know, Instagram and stories and getting links to your website, like emails, you know, these things all work. It's just a matter of like, most of the time that I see, it's not like totally pivoting from that and being like, okay, we're giving up on Instagram. Screw that. We're going to go to LinkedIn or, you know, whatever platform. It's not necessarily like that huge shift. It's just these little 1% tweaks that were like, okay, if we say these things in a different way, what kind of results are we getting? Okay, if our people have kind of responded to this, how can we do more of that? Um, like with an email campaign, campaign, it's like, okay, seeing like what value people like, being like, okay, let's provide more of that. Or speaking to objections, okay, that really resonated with people. We've had clients um, that we worked in speaking to objections and kind of like their email funnel and like the traffic to their website just shot through the roof. Like people loved it. Like people felt so seen and heard and it wasn't like like that was like the email out of their like welcome series that like just blew up and we were just like okay people really like that like yes and like just speaking to like what people were thinking like we just saw, saw these huge huge shifts and visits to their websites because of that one little tweak we didn't change the strategy of their emails we didn't change the strategy of their series it was literally like okay we've been doing these eight email series for a while, let's go it down to four. Let's really get intentional with what those welcome series emails are. Let's really kind of tweak this wording. And so that's where we get the play. It's not really like huge sweeps and changes to strategies. It's more of like making the ones that you're doing work because, you know, there's only a certain number of platforms out there and you don't want to be on every single one. And it doesn't even make sense to be on all of them. Like a lot of businesses, it doesn't really make sense to be on LinkedIn or um, whatever else, you know, have a YouTube channel with tons of stuff. Like it doesn't all make sense. So it's like looking at what you're doing and how do we just make that work better? Does that make sense? Does that, when you know it's time to try a different one, like it may not be trying a different one. It might just be tweaking the one that you have. But if you have more specifics around like what that could be, cause I know there might be like a few iterations with you of what that could be, but feel free to like give more more context there um, and then the implement piece also circles back to strategy so um, 
of a strategy kind of like what we were just talking about like picking and sticking and just tweaking with like what what you're doing within that strategy um getting support so that you can maybe go all in on that strategy like whatever that is like make sure that like you're sold on your strategy and you're in it and you're seeing that like you know this is the strategy and i'm not like constantly like changing every month of like okay well now i'm going to pinterest and now i'm doing youtube and now i'm doing this it's like yes we're picking and sticking it and making those tiny tweaks along the way so i feel like anis's question and the whole conversation i just kind of had kind of helps with that circling back to the strategy piece and then going back to the organized piece like get support to stay in it because it is hard to do all the things be in charge of all of the posts all of the scheduling all the creation um so getting support also to stay in it whether that's with a coach you know that is like a lot of my job with clients like they're not showing to up up to their sessions like hey let's do something new let's change something like i mean if they are i'm kind of like oh pump the brakes like how long have we been doing this what are we what are we trying to accomplish here like we definitely have times in the beginning where it's like okay we're making kind of a lot of changes to their strategy because they might not have one but then as we go on it's like we're not changing that much and so what i'm really doing is helping them stay in it and seeing that things are working because our brains want to find you know the negative three to one like we're always scanning the horizon looking for danger looking for what's wrong all these pieces and so i'm helping them be like actually this is working like maybe there's not actually a problem right now we just need to do more of this or this is the problem we need to solve or this is a gap we need to close like it doesn't mean we need to like grow our audience by a thousand people it just means that we need to get the people in front of us to come in or to buy or to take us up on our free offer like whatever that is so it's really like where do we need to stay in it and see what's working um because that's just what that what that's what creates more results is doing more of what's working so it's really like you know one of my clients it's it's not necessarily like like i just said growing the audience it's really like okay how can we get more of those people in the door um and some people it's like okay we literally need to get this in front of more people like we can see on the back end with her google analytics like okay she actually has a really good conversion rate it just needs to be in front of more people like like 10 people saw it you know so it's like five people converted so that's a 50 percent conversion rate so it's nothing wrong with the conversion rate it's really like she just literally needs to get in front of more people with this whereas another person is like you know we just need to increase the conversion rate like we have a large audience or we have all these people on our email list like how do we get them to come in the door how do we get them to take that first step because that's where the kink in the hose is so that's something i'm always talking about is like the king in the hose solving the right problem um so if you're feeling like I don't know where the kink in the hose is. I have been going all in on strategy and maybe it's not the right one or, you know, I've been trying to create passive revenue and I don't know what my one offer is. I don't have that, you know, on lockdown and with clients and rolling through the door or a good system around getting support for that. Like I invite you to book a 10K content strategy audit. Like this is something I am so passionate about. We can look at your content strategy. We can talk about your sales process. We can talk about the kink in the hose. Like this is one-to-one -one support for you for free so i'm going to drop the link below um, and just feel free i've got a spot open friday you can grab that one otherwise i keep them kind of booking end in my week um, so i don't keep a ton of spots open for that but i love supporting clients and especially like what kind of kicked off this whole conversation came from a call that was you know going down the rabbit hole of passive revenue and really kind of getting on track to really get the one one offer on lockdown so um, I get so much from these calls and I know that the people on the other end just walk away with such great takeaways and things they can use in their business. So thank y'all again. I feel like I said a lot in a short amount of time. So again, I'm so thankful for y'all joining and um, just being here. I know there's a million places you can be. And tomorrow we have a special guest. Um, her name is Lisa. She is a colleague and a friend of mine. So um, we're going to have an extra live stream this week. I just totally... Just dawned on me tomorrow um follow her on instagram she's leap with lisa so it'll be tomorrow same time um 12 o'clock noon and it'll just be a fun extra live stream this week so can't wait for you to join us for that but have a great rest of your day and i'll see you later bye